I just want to sort of reinforce just uh, the site type of history that's being made here. We talked about the launch pad, the significance of the launch pad. And what I want to introduce, uh, who I want to introduce to you right now is Bill Barry. Bill Barry is NASA's chief, um, uh, chief, uh, chief historian, right? Did I say that right? Yeah, that's right. That's chief historian, Bill Barry. All right. Well, well, great. It's good to see you. So, can we talk a little bit about this? Because I, I mean, I, you know, people might think that I'm sort of overstating what's so exciting about this, but you can kind of put the whole thing in context. Um, just give us a sense of where today lands in kind of the history of American space travel. Well, yeah, Emory, like you said, there are there are usually gaps between new systems. So even between Mercury and Gemini and Gemini and Apollo in the early days of the space program, there are gaps. Uh, after we ended the Apollo program, it's a gap those shuttle programs start. So it's always a little excitement as you wait for the new program to come online. And that's the position we're in now. It's you know, been 10 years of effort to, to get us ready to, to fly um, uh, humans again from the United States. Uh, you know, we have been flying people up to the space station since then, but it's been on Soyuz launch vehicles and we've been you know, paying uh, our Russian you know, partners to, to get those folks delivered. Uh, but this is a this is a really big inflection point because now we're suddenly in a position where um, you know, we're going to have not just one new vehicle, but once the Dragon gets going, and then we'll have our the Boeing Starliner flying later this year, and then we'll, um, we'll also we've already test flown the Orion spacecraft without a crew on board, but we'll be flying that again in the Artemis missions up and coming. So suddenly the United States is going to have three ways to get humans into space, and, and we're going to have a, a huge increase in the access to the space for uh, for uh, people to get up there and, and do all kinds of things. So it's a really important point in our history. And, and of course, you know, one of the things that we keep bringing up is that this is the first time that a private company is doing this. SpaceX has been sending cargo up to the International Space Station and has been pretty successful at that. But this is the first time they're going to actually have human beings on board. Um, why did NASA sort of ultimately decide to farm out this sort of um, technology? I mean, for a while there, it was NASA that did it all themselves. And, and now, yeah, we do have private companies in competition uh, vying to, be, um, to, to get that NASA contract. Why did they begin doing that to begin with? Well, this traces back a number of years, 15 to 20 years ago, when we first started looking at needing to regularly get you know, people and equipment back and forth to space. Uh, so in the early 2000s, uh, you know, NASA was depending on our partners to get people and, and equipment to space. Uh, and, and naturally, you know, at some point, you just say, well, wouldn't it be cheaper if we used, you know, American companies, in fact, to, to do the same sort of thing? They had cargo and the people. So um, we originally started the, the crew car or the cargo program um, to get uh, cargo deliveries to the space station. SpaceX was uh, the first company uh, to get in on that, and they did a great job uh, developing that system which then led, of course, to the Crew Dragon. It's the same basic vehicle, right? And uh, so that's been a, uh, the idea was that, uh, you know, we can, we can have private companies do this, pay them to, to get people to low Earth orbit up to the space station. And then NASA can concentrate its funds and its efforts on doing the things that, that you know, America wants us to do, which is going out into deeper space, back to the moon and onto Mars. So, so this is a way to leverage uh, limited budgets um, and, uh, and do some new things. Um, all really fascinating stuff, Bill Barry, perhaps one of the coolest jobs on the planet, NASA historian. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Emily.